Hey everybody, it's Quack here. Welcome to my play of Way of the Hunter. Um, we're going to walk through this together and see what happens. I'll give you some of the tips that I've picked up along the way from watching other content creators. So let's uh, give this a shot. Let's start. Elliot Little speaking. Hey, Grandpa. I'm getting closer to the lodge. Your phone magically erased all the contacts again? River. Nurse Ellen was helping me with it, but she said she doesn't know how these old-fashioned phones work. I'll help you with it when you return. Oh, I'm so grateful you decided to help me with the Bear Den Ranch. Competition is growing every day. Ethically hunted meat with government inspection? Sounds like a pretty niche market. Yeah, you'd be surprised. The demand is rising every day. And with the hoax about the disease spreading. Uh, what? I can't hear you. River, can you hear me better now? Yep, way better. The service in the valley is really bad, so I'll make it quick. I've sent you a package a day ago, but I'm not sure when it will arrive. Just make yourself at home and... Maybe greet your old friend Echo. You know, it's been a while. Oh, God, I forgot about her. How long has it been? Ten years. I hope you didn't forget the keys. Oh, God, I did. What should I do? <laughs> Don't worry. The spare is in the usual spot. All right, I'm here. I'll call you later. And be nice to the nurses. But tell them to be nice to me. I'm always a gentleman. <laughs> and kiddo, or I guess I should start calling you River now. Welcome to the Ness Purse Valley. Way of the Hunter. Diving in. So guys, it looks like we are jumping right in here. Um, I believe that we are going to be going through the tutorial on this episode. So going to be a lot of uh, knowledge being absorbed here. Going to read a lot of stuff and see if we can't get to the point to where we unlock the shop. And from there we'll go to episode two. Um, I'm a sucker for cutscenes and content and all the little ins and outs of the areas we have along here so I'm going to be doing some reading alright so the player controls are pretty obvious PC, Xbox, PlayStation move around jump, crouch, 
stand back up from crouching, double press, hold to go from prone or to prone. You can fine adjust your speed relative to your current stance. X to move faster, R to go slower. The faster you move, the easier you can the easier animals can hear you. To make less noise, either walk or move slowly. Running means spooking animals quickly and from greater distances. So and this is our encyclopedia, it seems. So player controls, private areas. Most of the region is ready for you to hunt wherever you wish. There are, however, a few areas which are private property and you need to obtain a permit to hunt there. A permit can be obtained by buying it from the shop or by completing jobs for property owners. The private areas have animals with the highest fitness and great trophies. So private land means better animals. So this is telling us what we're in right here, which is the encyclopedia. This is your encyclopedia. All the knowledge you gain during your hunting adventures gathered in one place. It will get gradually more extensive as you progress. Don't forget to revisit it regularly to learn more. And I will tell you from experience that this will help a lot. Story objective, objective area, next story objective. Whether you follow the story is completely up to you. If you prefer to hunt freely and set your own challenges, you can unlock most of the achievements and earn money to afford all shop content. You can also find everything to taxidermy while skipping the story and hunting free. Finding the next story objectives. When you complete a story objective, you can discover new ones at various locations. New story objectives are always displayed on the hunting map. To continue the story, you have to claim a new story objective first. To keep track of new story objectives, there are various helpful features. Objective area. Once you complete an objective, another one becomes automatically active, and an objective area will be highlighted on the hunting map. You can change the objective you want to pursue by opening the hunting map, pressing hotkey, and navigating to objective overview. Browse available objectives and choose different one to activate. Compass objective marker. Following the objective marker on the compass on the upper edge of the screen, once you have reached the objective area, the compass marker disappears. HUD objective markers. Sometimes you can, sometimes an objective marker is visible directly in the landscape. Such markers are only displayed on specific occasions, so don't rely on them entirely. Now, you have the different firearms. I'm not going to go through those yet. We'll go through them as I get them. And we have the different ammunitions and what kind of ballistics they give off. Um, you have all your gear, your binos, your sights, your um, sights for shotguns, your collars, and you have your characters. River Knox, which is us. I guess we are a, a stunt double. River Knox is 29 years old, lives in Los Angeles, is a su successful stunt double for big Hollywood movies. Ever since he was a kid, he loved to move his body. He went from dance to gymnastics and eventually also martial arts and parkour. He grew up as an only child and was raised by his father. His mother had a high-risk pregnancy and died after labor. Every summer, he visited his grandparents in Nez Perce Valley, where his grandfather Wallace manages Bear Den's ranch meat supply business for high-end restaurants and his grandmother Rose made art and wall designs with local herbs. Now his dream job has become something suffocating. He came to Nez Perce Valley to help his grandfather, but also to help himself. A little bit about our character there. And this seems to be his grandfather, Wallace Elliot Willow. Um, it says his favorite animal to hunt is mule deer. His favorite weapon is grandpa's old rifle. And he is the Bear Den Ranch owner. Wallace has a gentle nature, and River remembers him always smiling unless River asked about his mother. At times like those, Wallace's face became clouded with sadness. Wallace is a big supporter of ethical hunting, 
and for him, close encounters with animals means the most. He founded Bear Den Ranch to bring the best quality of game meat to people who've never tasted it, but still want to enjoy it ethically. During long years of hunting, he started to sketch the animals around him while waiting in blinds or hunting stands. At first, it was only a simple way of spending time, but as the years went by, he caught himself feeling happiest when capturing animals on paper, while stealing his wife's art supplies and not feeling guilty about it at all. <laughs> it's a nice old man. So, let's dive into this here. Um, looks like our objective is first things first. Find the spare key in the mailbox. As your grandfather got older, he sometimes forgot to take his keys with him, so he always kept a spare inside the mailbox. Not the most secure hiding spot, but always better than trying the windows. Huh. Alright, let's go to the mailbox. There it is. Thank God we have a trustworthy <laughs> Ain't that right? Alright, let's go inside our lodge here. Got some more info here in the encyclopedia. Storing items. The number of items you can carry on a hunt is limited. Excess equipment can be stored in the lodge or car storage, always available in both. Equipping items. When you decide to change equipment, all items in your possession can be picked up from storage. Whenever you open your storage, you automatically refill your ammunition from your grandfather's vast reserves. It's basically free of charge, which is pretty cool. Vehicle storage. The lodge is not the only place you can access storage. It can also be done from the vehicle trunk. Vehicle storage lets you access everything you have in the lodge. Here's a little bit of real life hunting trivia. It's best to clean your firearm after returning from each hunt or a day at the shooting range. To thoroughly clean your firearm, read the owner's manual and disassemble it. Use a cleaning solvent and gun oil. If you need some off-season ideas, it's always a good time to check your equipment. Make a checklist of the items you use each season and be sure to clean, inspect, shoot, and store everything properly. Pretty good advice. Next objective is... Equip Grandpa's old rifle from the firearm safe and attach a scope to it. Before you head out to the woods, make sure you have the necessary gear. Your grandfather left you his trusted rifle in the firearm safe and look up the route to Echo. It's been 10 years since you've hiked up there last. Uh, get a $200 reward for that. There's the safe and grandpa's old rifle. Lever action holds six bullets, a 30-30, so it doesn't say Winchester but it's definitely a Winchester 30-30 lever action uh, hunting tier four. And looks like we will equip the Leopold VX Freedom two to seven times by 33 scope. So we get a seven times zoom, little scope, low quality lens we'll make it work more info here gear handling to select a firearm press up on the directional pad press left on the directional pad for your gear and right for your binoculars firearms and binoculars only work outside the lodge or cabins moreover you can only select items previously equipped from the storage most actions with gear or firearms in your hands are carried out by combinations of L2 and R2. Keep experimenting. Some more real life hunting trivia. Aside from the usual gear like binoculars and ammunition, there are many other things every hunter likes to bring with them. Here are a few. Water and food. First aid supplies. You can never be too careful. Scent killer. You want to mask your scent to animals with great sense of smell. Clothes and boots, camouflage and orange. Hunters should dress warm for the early hours and wear waterproofs if hunting near water sources. You need a skinning knife, a gutting knife necessarily for field dressing. 
a bone saw, your hunting tag for sure. Countries have different laws and permissions about hunting, but you always need to have the physical document with you while hunting and maps and or GPS. So the next objective is reach the northwest balcony on the second floor. Before you head out to the woods, make sure you have the necessary gear. Your grandfather left you with his trusted rifle in the firearm safe and look up the route to Echo. It's been 10 years since you've hiked there last. So it's an add-on to the mission. Sneaky. Wow, look at that. It's a pretty wonky looking deer. Hmm. So I guess that deer is Hollywood's father. But it also looks like there's a slot there for another deer named Hollywood. Hmm. I like the sound that the fireplace makes there. This game is honestly beautiful for what it is. A lot of place to taxidermy animals here. Okay, more information. To use the binoculars, equip them and press L2. The primary use of the binoculars is to spot game from distances or a vantage point. If you spot an animal using binoculars, activate Hunter Sense, which will be used by Triangle for extra information such as animal species, sex, age, approximate trophy score, and current behavior. Age could be young, adult, or mature. Trophy scores go from one star to five. Sexual dimorphism is present and observable with most animals. Behavior, animals change their behavior from calm to noticing a threat to reacting to the threat, which usually ends in them running away. Species name for less experienced hunters. This is a possibility to learn visual differences between animal species. Some binoculars also allow for measuring distance. Good to know. So, let's take out our binoculars here. Look down here. Okay, there's another one to the right. On the bridge. Looks like we got one straight up. See you soon. See you soon. It's like 900 meters away. More information. Exploration and uncovering map areas. Unexplored locations. When you start the game, all unexplored areas on the hunting map are shown with minimal details and info. The only explored area is the one around you. As you move around, details appear in the areas you've already been to. Lodges and cabins are always visible, even when the area is not yet explored. This can help you find hunting cabins early in the game. Exploration. Once you interact with a map inside the lodge or cabin, undiscovered points of interest become visible on the map in the form of the mystery icon. Points of interest that are revealed through the map include all camps in the area, private areas, if any, and exceptional views of other landmarks. To uncover points of interest displayed as mystery icons on the map, you must find the place in the world and interact with it. Real life hunting trivia. During off season, many hunters like to visit the places they plan to hunt and take notes. Learning the land is an important step. You'll find it pays to learn the lay of the land and how animals use it. You can also map trails, bedding areas, food sources, watering holes. There are some things that aerial maps just don't show. You can also find novel places to hunt because there are never enough of these. Don't get too comfortable. Try to venture to unfamiliar places and gain permissions to enter private lands. Alright. Sorry for all the information dump and reading. I just feel that there are some people out there in the world that are like me that enjoy knowing all these things that just don't have the, uh, the means to get the consoles to play the game. So I want to give them all the information they can get. Alright, so here's a map. You've discovered Valley Grassland Habitat.
open country for beginners and seasoned veterans alike. The meadows serve as prime feeding areas for both pheasants and badgers. Undisturbed grasslands with tall grass have the potential to hold a lot of small but also some bigger game. Okay, some more information here. Hunting map and navigation. Basic navigation in the map. Press the uh, main button there to open your hunting map. To zoom in and out, press L2 or R2. To move the center of the map, use your uh, moving icon to left stick. Tracking new objectives. Objective area. In an objective overview, select a mission you want to track and activate it. If you didn't have any previous mission active, this will happen automatically. Some objectives add a highlighted objective area on the hunting map. Invisible information. At any given time, the hunting map will give you following information. Your position, position of the vehicle, position of the lodge, positions of private cabins and associated private areas, game time, cardinal directions necessary for navigation, indication if animals can smell you. So that's pretty new. Did not know that one. This is why we read. Um, the hunting map has two main features, the zoom level and filter. Different zoom levels show different information ranging from the macro perspective to the micro perspective. The macro perspective gives you an overview of the entire level consisting of the environmental habitats. The micro perspective focuses on particular areas you can further change the visible information by filtering various icons so your objective is to enter the car your grandfather suggests going to meet your mysterious friend echo while you wait for his package to arrive in the mailbox it is quite far so take the car as far as the road goes there is an improvised parking lot below Echo Hill. Continue from there on foot and look out for the ladder. Reach the top, which you already glimpsed with binoculars. Hmm. Didn't notice that it was a ladder. It'd be cool if they would allow us to zoom in with the binoculars. All right, so let's go outside. An FOV slider would be really cool too. Everything's really close. Could get a little dizzying. But it does help with the immersion. More information. Vehicle handling. Vehicle handling. To enter the vehicle, press square or leave by pressing circle. To accelerate, press R2. Steer like normal. You can look around with the R stick. Um, you can handbrake with X. The camera can be changed by pressing the right directional pad. Also keep in mind that animals will hear you from a distance and will run away. A vehicle is fast, but it's also loud. A vehicle recall. If you lost your car somewhere or just want to have it closer, you can always recall it from your computer in the lodge. Or you can go straight to the parking lot and interact with the parking sign. Real life hunting trivia. When hunting in any given area, the use of motor vehicle while shooting is illegal. A hunter cannot be traveling on a vehicle while hunting, nor can they use the vehicle in any way to attempt to bring down an animal. It is also unlawful What in the world is going on? Sorry about that. It is also unlawful to discharge a firearm or an arrow from a motor vehicle with the intent to take wildlife. Poachers. 
Hmm. I wonder. I did buy the uh, season pass and everything. Yeah. So if you buy the season pass, you actually get a different skin here with the war paint. And that's with the uh, $60 bundle. Alright, so let's go meet our friend Echo. Let's see it on the map here. Okay. So there's a little question mark over here. I'll have to go check that out soon. And one over there, too. So I'm going to put a marker here by hitting square. It just gives us something tangible to look at on the map there, like that red triangle. It's not too wonky to drive, but um, it's a little clunky, but it's not bad. It's definitely not meant to go really fast. It's just way more convenient than walking in the game. More information here. Vehicle health, storage. Vehicle health, driving is fun, but driving in the forest can be dangerous. Not only can you hurt yourself, but you might also break the car. Once a vehicle is broken, you need to go back to the nearest lodge or cabin to recall it if you want to use it. Vehicle storage. Vehicle storage works the same way as the storage in the lodge does. You have a limited number of items which can be carried with you for a hunt. When you decide to change the equipment to hunt a different animal species or to just mix it up, all your purchased items can be picked up from the vehicle storage. Whenever you interact with a storage, you get a free ammunition refill. It's good to know. Markers. There are various kinds of markers which can help with tracking objectives, kind of like what I just did, or simply your general orientation in the world. Exploration marker. Exploration markers can be created by pressing R1 in the world or by pressing square on the hunting map. These markers will always be visible to your compass, but you can choose whether to have them visible in the world or only when you're using hunter sense and options. You can only have one exploration marker at a time. Tracking marker. Intended for creating an exact path for you to follow, tracking markers can be created by pressing and holding R1 in the world or by pressing and holding triangle on the hunting map. These markers will always be visible in your compass and you can choose whether to have them always visible in the world or only when using hunter sense and options. Highlighting points of interest. Points of interest are the various places in the map which are especially worth exploring. You can open the hunting map, select a point of interest highlighted as a marker by pressing R2 these markers will always be visible in your compass, and you can choose whether to have them always visible in the world or only when using Hunter Sense and Options. Deleting markers. You've placed too many markers, and now it looks a mess. Don't worry, you can always remove them by repeating the action over the existing marker. You can also easily remove all markers from the hunting map. And some more trivia for us. Hunters nowadays use apps to mark special locations. But before fancy gadgets were available, they used different methods. For example, in Slovakia, hunters used to break branches off trees and make symbols with them to tell others about their surroundings. To warn of dangers or various roads or to indicate the direction of the animal ran in after being shot. These branches are called Zolomsky in Slavic and are still used today mainly to honor the fallen animals. And if anybody wants to uh, tell me how to properly pronounce that, feel free to uh, leave it in the comments in the uh, pronunciation form. <laughs> Alright, let's continue going to Echo. Yeah, it was. Mm, doing some off-roading here. Maybe you do. Thank you. 
continue up the hills on foot, reach the ladder and climb up. Go ahead and remove that marker. Guess I'll just follow this trail here. And I'm only running right now because I'm going to pretty well follow the uh, the main storyline to start out with. If you guys want me to do other specific species animal hunts or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment below. And I might just go ahead and make a little side video in between on this series of me hunting said animal. See what I can come up with. I'm always open to suggestions and you guys can help me figure out what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong and what I could do better. So just leave me a like or a dislike, comment, maybe even subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Be really appreciated. the ladder here. We well, actually got to walk up. There's not an animation. Okay. Well, I don't look like a person. Great echo. It's an actual echo. It's a good childhood friend. More information. Fast traveling. What's a good sight to see in a game that's so large? There's various ways to travel, but the quickest one is usually fast travel. Discover more cabins and camps in the woods to unlock fast travel to these places. Once unlocked, you can always fast travel there. Open the hunting map by pressing the center button. Hover over the place you want to travel to and then hold triangle to activate fast travel. Good to know. So we are going to be visiting the hunting range there. So, visiting the hunting range, hone your shooting skills to pass the time while waiting for a package from grandfathers to arrive. You decided to brush up your skills down at the shooting range and check whether the rifle is still good as you remember it. Player note, or flyer note, take, taking hunting again. Make sure to polish your shooting skills. The best hunters never shoot an animal unless they are there, sure their shot will be lethal. The shooting range helps you hone your skills and make that single lethal shot as well as a sharpening of your competitive drive. More information. Zeroing, aiming, and hold breath. Sighting in, this process, sighting in is a process necessary to getting a rifle and its optic tuned for accuracy. Put simply, it means aligning the place you are aiming at with the spot the fired bullet will hit. Now this may sound complicated, but bear with us. Practically, it works like this. If a firearm is sighted at a certain distance, the hunter should be aiming at targets at a similar distance, if possible. In such a case, the bullet will land exactly where the sights show it would. There are two ways to achieve this in-game. Zeroing. Zeroing is the basic form of sighting in. To zero in on a further distance, press R, or right on the directional pad. And to sight in a shorter distance, press left while zoomed in. Aiming. When you shoot, a distance, when you shoot at a distance of 50 meters with a firearm sighted in at 100 meters, 
the bullet will fly higher than the target. This means you must lower your aim to compensate for the offset. If you shoot at a distance of 150 meters with a firearm sighted at 100 meters, the bullet will fly lower. Therefore, you must aim higher to compensate for the offset. Makes sense. For this reason, it is always best to sight the firearm on the exact distance to the target. The distance can either be measured with binoculars or estimated by experience. Hold breath. Once aiming while triggering, hold and press L1. This will stabilize your shot and give you a window of opportunity to place for the perfect shot. A lot of good information here. So it looks like we're going to be aiming for this decoy over here. See if I can pull out Grandpa's old rifle. Alright, so this is zero for 50 meters. Okay. Hit a deer in the vital zone. Hit the target at 50 meters mark. Two times zoom. I remember we can go to seven with this. There's the vitals. I'll hold breath. And go for the heart. <laughs> now it's telling me to zero for 150 meters. Got some information here. Animal damage system, injury and bleeding. Big game has the following organs which are taken into consideration when damage is calculated. So this is really in-depth, as about as a best of a simulation as we can get as far as hunting games go. Brain, spine, heart, lungs, artery, liver, stomach, intestines, flesh, bone, and skull. The result of the shot depends on the energy and trajectory of the bullet during the impact and further on. When an animal is hit, it will always bleed. The color of the blood will tell you which organs have been hit. Brain and spine, you get red blood. Heart, lungs, artery, you get pink. Liver, you get the dark crimson. Stomach and intestines, red with green mixed in. And then bone and flesh will be red. The bullet should always hit the target with optimal energy. This means that the bullet penetration is deep enough and causes a large enough cavity that delivers sufficient damage to the target the desired result is the most painless and fastest kill. Ethical shooting helps to achieve a quick and painless kill. The animal does not suffer and dies near the place of the hit. It is also easier for the hunter to find and harvest it. It is advised to use the proper caliber at a reasonable range. It is also best to aim for the heart or lungs as vital shots are considered the most effective. So this shot here looks like it's a little farther away, a little harder to see. So we're going to go for the vitals here. And it looks like I missed somehow. So let's try this again. Oh, I guess it's even farther away than that. That's only 100 meters there. Ha! Huh. shooting skills sharp but 200 meters way too far for a safety or shot Okay, more information here. Attachments, optics, sway, and recoil. Visit the storage in the lodge or at a vehicle and pick the attachment of your choice. You can attach only optics you already own, or you can remove the optics and just use the iron sights. Moreover, you can use the same optics on more than one firearm. 
optics. Scopes are equipped with reticles mounted in an appropriate position to provide an accurate point of aim. Scopes are used with all types of system that require magnification in addition to reliable visual aiming. They are best for shooting at medium to long distances when the animal is usually calm and the hunter has enough time and space to find a vantage point. Aim and ethically shoot the animal. A collimator sight is a type of optic sight that allows you to see an illuminated aiming point aligned with the device the sight is attached to. They are often used for fast moving targets at close to mid ranges when the hunter needs to see not only the animal but also more of their surroundings. Iron sights are an aiming system composed of a front and rear marker which when aligned with your eye create a sight picture that can be used for aiming. And we also have sway. The movement you see in the scope when aiming it can be eliminated by holding your breath somewhat. And recoil is the rearward, rearward squidward thrust generated by firing a firearm to mitigate the recoil and to see where your shot where you landed your shot do not release R2 upon firing the firearm makes sense well, that's a long shot there for 150 meters and I'm zoomed in max with this scope here and I need to hit the vitals at 200 so I just zero to 200 and hope for the best with the sway. <coughs> Got it. So check the forgotten note. Your grandmother your grandfather had in mind to take care of this problem himself, but he probably forgot. He does that from time to time. Badgers have overpopulated behind his lodge. Help get rid of them before they dig their sets underneath it. Mission details. Hey Wallace, don't forget to take care of the badgers wreaking havoc behind the lodge. Sincerely, myself. You forgetful old geezer. All right. Well, where is said forgotten note? Oh, it's probably on that stand. Right next to me. There it is. I guess they just made me reload there. It's pretty realistic for the gun it is. Enter the hunting stand near the Badger Calamity. Let's say that's probably where that question mark is right there. So I'm gonna go fast travel to the lodge, be a little quicker. And we're gonna go to the stand to the Badger Calamity. Alright, and we're walking. you will find yourself doing an absurd amount of walking in this game. 
crouched for the most part. Um, might as well get used to it. I don't really have a use of the Jeep just yet, in my opinion. Looks like we got some movement over there. Um, the Jeep will help you get to some of the other fast travel points, but like it said in the info, in the encyclopedia, that it is very loud and you will spook a lot of animals, so keep that in mind for yourself. One good note is, is that there is an auto walk feature, even for console. For the PlayStation 5, you can hit L1 and it will let you auto walk and allow you to, you know, do some other things while you play. Wow, you can see them all. Well, it just says shoot a badger. But, uh, I think we want to... They talk about ethical killing and taking your trophies and stuff. Since a female. Another female. We want to try to find a older male. Preferably a trophy. Right, that one right there. A five-star badger. Yeah. Zero in at 50, 50 meters. Hold breath. Dropped him. All right. Blood trails. I cannot believe we just shot a five-star badger. An animal leaves a blood trail after every shot. The color and the amount can tell you a lot about the shot you placed. The color of the blood will tell you which organs have been hit. Brain and spine, red, it will die on the spot. Heart and lungs and artery, pink with bubbles, large amount of blood. Stomach and intestines, red with green mixed in, bone of flesh. Um, red, small amounts of blood. To examine the blood trail, interact with the blood splatter. So let's go check this out. I really, let me get another one here real quick. Missed him. All right. Shouldn't push her luck. I honestly am really surprised that we were able to just get a five-star badger like that. I can tell you from experience on my first game, on my personal account, that I don't have any five stars. <laughs> so this is quite awesome. Let's see if we can analyze. Yeah. So it looks like we got pink blood, medium amount, air bubbles, time to expire, instant. Yeah, we dropped him. So let's go ahead and grab it here. So flesh, right lung was what killed it, and we also got into the left lung some. but the right lung is what killed it. We hit with uh, plenty of energy to kill it. Everything was good to go. Let's check the overview. We got a five star hunt rating and a five star trophy badger. Male mature. Couldn't have got any better than that. 97.88% genetics. That is a steal. We are definitely going to uh, taxidermy him. We're not selling. Looks like we got it a trophy there. Not great, not terrible. So I got some more info here. So this is what I was telling you about, the fitness gene pool. Each animal has a fitness value which affects the animal's trophy and size of the animal. The higher the fitness, the higher the trophy score, and the size of the animal fitness is the genetic potential of the animal. Gene pool. Animal habitats consist of groups of animals which share a common average fitness value. You can change the average fitness of a habitat by hunting low trophy score males, <clears throat> weeding out the bad genetics. In this case, the average fitness value increases and habitats will eventually be populated by animals with higher fitness. Conversely, when you only hunt the high trophy score males, the average fitness of the habitat will be lower, resulting in lower quality trophies. Here's some real life hunting trivia for us. 
Difference between antlers, horns, and tusks. Horns are permanently affixed to the skull. They consist of a bone core covered and a layer of keratin, and they are never separated from the animal. Only in case of injury or breaking the horns, if this happens, they never grow back. Um, they never grow back. Horns come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes, from the spikes of the uh, kamoi to the giant horns of the bighorn sheep. Horns are grown by bovines, including cattle, sheep, goats, and antelope, and can be found either on just males or both sexes, depending on the species. Some chameleons can also have horns. Antlers are pure bone structures without keratin, and they grow from the skull every year in the spring and then are shed in the winter. Antlers are branched and can get extremely complicated and atypical in the spring. Antlers start growing, fed by blood vessels, in a thin layer of skin and fur called velvet. Once the antlers are fully grown, the velvet is shed, which can look extremely bloody and horrifying, but is normal and healthy. When a buck's testosterone levels drop after the rut or mating season, a new bone cell called a osteoclast removes the existing bone tissue between the uh, pedicle and antlers, which would be the skull, causing them to fall off. And then wild boars have neither horns nor antlers, but they do have tusks, which are essentially giant elongated teeth. All right. So. I guess I have to actually harvest another badger here since I went ahead and taxidermy the other one. Kind of failed that mission there. But I mean, who who would just sell a five star like that? I know I couldn't. So I'm gonna have to go back up here, and I'm gonna have to wait for a badger to come around. And uh, if it takes a while, we'll cut it out and see you whenever I get one. got a perfect shot heart left lung right lung that couldn't have been a better shot unfortunately though it is a young female but she'll sell $16 like to keep them a little older on the female side got some more info here we have now looks like we've unlocked our shop to earn money, you can complete story objectives, jobs, and tasks, or sell your harvest. Uh, but the fun question is how to spend it. You can access a shop on the computer to buy better gear and firearms. You can also choose to save your harvest for taxidermy and collect the pieces for display in the lodge. After buying an item, you still need to select it in the storage and equip it. Plan and select what to bring on your next hunting trip. If you want to use bot attachments, you can have you have to visit the storage in the lodge or at a vehicle and pick the attachment of your choice you can only attach optics you already own or you can remove the optics altogether and use iron sights moreover you can use the same optics on more than one firearm so it's good that they reiterate a lot of the uh, information they give you here so I'm gonna go ahead and back here to the trophy lodge and uh, I think I'm going to see if we can't get our badger put up here in our trophy lodge. Do we want to go with the uh, the calm one, or do we want to do the fighting? I, mean, I don't think we had two of them, but we can do the fighting. Let's try that one. And there's our five-star American Badger. Let's go ahead and add that there. Now, if we get another one, we will uh, have a nice little thing there. Just need to get another five-star trophy sometime down the road. 
All right, guys. So this is going to be the end of episode one. It was a long one. We had a big tutorial to go through, a lot of information we had to read, but I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, hope you guys tune in for the next video on Way of the Hunter. Quack Bang, out.